Okay, this is a quick uh, introduction to the video producer co-op. I made a quick um, keynote presentation. I'll be working on it, but I figured I'd give you the idea right away so you can see how concrete it is. I don't really think there's any time to waste. All right, uh, so there's this uh, idea of a video producer co-op. Uh, it involves a bunch of people. They come in. They uh, create some bylaws that have to do with any money involved, uh, specifically being allocated to go to the uh, free speech video service provider. It's a democratic process. There's multiple ways to access the uh, co-op's database. And some sort of committee of the co-op of the members chooses the VSP. And when I say some sort of, you know, the members choose that. If we have a representative. Uh, structure at some point and basically the members vote on that all right the members each give a dollar a month to be a member I think that's a good token amount and it happens to be what I have researched the rough cost of a connection per month 24 7 to a video server not to get to the web page of course but I mean to upload or view a video okay that money then is in the co-op and it is uh, spent on a video storage and delivery service, uh, a video service provider. Um, the members, of course, are in the co-op, so let's draw them this way because we're going to say, well, hmm, how do we access the uh, storage provider? Well, the storage provider has some sort of interface. Members will have a right to access that interface uh, in some way. Uh, you know, it might be a little bit low level, right? Because the video service provider gives you a service you use to make a video site, but they do have ways to access directly. And of course, I could help provide something uh, if there's a problem with that, depending on the one chosen, because maybe that's a selection criteria. Of course, uh, what I'm getting at is that I have an interface which would access this uh, video s service provider and I uh, presume people would use it, some, but not all. And, uh, but I also presume that in, you know, the short, medium, or long run, somebody else uh, decides they have an idea for how it should work, and they uh, provide their own interface, and we would have multiple interfaces, and members could use either. So you can see it's kind of an open uh, architecture. All right, well, um, having said that, let me point out that my uh, system already currently hooks to YouTube and it would continue to do so. So it would connect this network to YouTube. And uh, I also would like to connect to other video services. So through my site, the advantage here is that with the co-op, you have as many connections as there are members. Uh, since members don't need to use their 24-7 uh, connection all the time, 24-7, uh, more people than just the members can access the videos, but it is somewhat limited depending how big the group is. Now I think that's okay because these are people uh, discussing things among themselves, having structured conversations, and we can let it organically grow that we support more um, uh, a bigger audience uh, natively. However, since my site also hooks to YouTube and hopefully these other video services and video m delivery methods, uh, there's other places to put your video. You know, so maybe you just put some videos, uh, the particular ones that need to be um, viewed as free speech content at uh, the member site um, at least until you know it's it's capable of you know the audience you you want to show it to you could still uh, put other videos at YouTube in fact um, we can do it with my service such that uh, at least with video with YouTube and I think uh, sort of in general there are upload interfaces so we could have it so that members can upload their video to our site and it posts it to YouTube and wherever else. So if there's a massive uh, audience, they can get to it. But in terms of the audience that is actually taking part in the conversation, you know, 
the, the five or dozen or 50 people, as long as they're members, they'd always be able to get in and see their responses to each other. I think this model will grow. Uh, people that are concerned, more concerned than I, about the potential size of their audience can uh, still use YouTube and be integrated. Uh, if they have something taken down on YouTube, they know a place to put it. And if you use uh, our interfaces, member interfaces for the reply system, if you reply to a video, your video is taken down from YouTube, you put it up on our site, uh, it'll still be a reply to whatever it was a reply to. It, the structure won't be lost. So I think there's advantages for the structured conversation and that's kind of the point. Now if you think of my situation, my website there is not um, a part of the co-op directly. It's an endeavor of a member. Uh, I would like that thing to be you know, built as a co-op type business as well but it's separate it's just doing a kind of business instead of just being dependent on youtube we would create a separate thing that was a video producers co-op um where the database is not to sell advertising or be a new kind of tv but it's for this activity we do video producers if you do art fine but it's for conversation you're expecting critique of your art it's not just a stage um I think we could have a better relationship with things like YouTube that are meant to be a stage, understand uh, their drives and just go, whatever, put your hands up in the air or, or say, oh, I see why it has to be that way or whatever, with the knowledge that we would have, you know, a repository and a, and a production method, and we could do it organically. And by the time we have thousands of people paying a dollar a month, if that ever happened, we would have a full-on website that could you know, play a, a video, a viral video that could keep up with the, the bandwidth and everything required for something like that. So, that would not be the goal though. We're not trying to be a viral video or stage. It's a place for a secure free speech security. Security of free speech. And, uh, and I think a dollar a month is a token amount. It requires committing um, somehow you know your your name and a small amount uh, which I think is good um, you could almost decide that it's like the whole thing with contracts having to be a dollar now the bylaws I will add some slides about the specifics of that and other ideas uh, in the next presentation cheers